Hello and welcome to the interactive and immersive HQ. My name is Marco and in today's video I'm gonna talk to you about a little or not so little failure um, I had in a recent project. Yeah, it was show for, uh, it was like the end of the trimester here in my university and there was a big show going on in this immersive room. There were many people and um yeah i prepared uh like some animations and stuff here and of course i wanted it to be interactive yeah the plan was to uh kind of when people approach the wall that um the image gets displaced with a kind of fluid effect and well like you know <laughs> for projects uh often it's happening or like you finish it maybe one day before um and yeah you only get to test it one time so yeah that was uh also the case here so i programmed everything i did all the animations yeah i did all the mapping for the camera and stuff um and then on the same day i well, tested it before and i saw them like when the light is changing or when it's not so bright uh, the camera doesn't track the people, you know, it was uh, supposed to be interactive for the visuals and also we had some spatial audio going on, which yeah, in the end then didn't work, you know, so yeah, but first I want to show you, actually now I kind of found, found out why it didn't work and uh, yeah, it was a good lesson for me also with the Z2i camera, if you don't know. I'm just going to show now on the screen. This is a Z2i camera. Uh, I had it mounted on top of one of the walls in the immersive room. And well, I also didn't do too much research, to be honest. I thought it's using infrared and it also works in the dark. Well, it's not. <laughs> uh, it has two optical sensors and uh, yeah, kind of a lot of program algorithms in it to uh, calculate the de um, the position and um, so let me show you now first how it's supposed to work so like you can see here on my screen um, I have the kind of simulation of the room which is also around me which you see here on a on the top left corner I can just make it a little bit bigger and maybe I can also just open here the data that I selected from the Z2i camera. And maybe I can even just open this here so that you can maybe better see where the displacement effect is happening. And here, of course, that white dot that is representing me. And uh, yeah, the Z camera can track up to 12 people, but yeah, I don't have <laughs> any people here now, so it's just me. So let me show you first how it's works and yeah just for information this room is seven meter wide and 10 meter or almost 11 meter long so if it's bright the camera works really good like you can see now All right, now you saw how it's working good. But of course, when you have a show in an immersive room, um, where you, you don't have the lights on, you know? So let me just turn them off quickly, and then I'm gonna show you again, uh, yeah, if the tracking is still working. Okay, let's try it again in the dark.
Uh, as you can see, the tracking doesn't really work anymore. And even if it works, yeah, now it kind of, I don't know why, uh, I'm kind of outside here of the room, even though I didn't uh, change any parameters of the mapping or something. Yeah. And yeah, that caused in the end that, uh, my show was not interactive. So I was just showing this uh, visuals here, which was, you know, still kind of nice, but, uh, uh I really wanted to, uh, yeah, show off, uh, some interactivity as well. I mean, we use some audio reactivity to, you know, at least have some kind of interaction going on. But yeah. And also, let me show you in the Z camera. Let's open the parameters here. Now, where is it? Yeah. So, this is something, yeah, I'm going to do some, re uh, some research on. But as you see now on the, on the right side here, the tracking is kind of like outside. And this is for some reason the camera, it tries to detect its own position as well. So here are these positions here. And as you see, these values change, you know, and yeah, that also just obviously changes the position of the player if the camera thinks uh oh i'm i'm not somewhere else uh i need to give him some different uh, position data now so even if you like reset it yeah it's really weird what's what's happening here i mean you can also kind of turn it off and reset but yeah it's still Really laggy, I've, yeah, I have to say. So what did I learn from that? Well, first of all, maybe you shouldn't try your final project, uh, just, you know, one day earlier or on the same day when you don't even have, uh, much access anymore to the room where it's happening. Uh, secondly, do your research really on the equipment that you're going to use. So. Yeah, if I would have known, um, before, I mean, it's not hard to find out, you know, but I was kind of in a rush as well. And I was like, oh yeah, I have this Z2 i camera here. I can use it. You know, it's expensive. It's probably going to work in the dark. No, it's not an infrared camera. I'm not saying this is a bad camera. Like, like you've seen when the light is on, it can track a person's, um, in a radius of uh, up to 10 meter, not in a radius, but in a distance from up to uh, 10 meter. So I think it's a really good camera. You just have to be aware that, um, yeah, it's not infrared. And I mean, in the end, um, before the show started, uh, you know, I talked a, li a little bit about the project. It's, uh, like about dreams and, uh, some, some fragments of dreams, uh, that, uh, some persons wrote down. And, uh, that I, then I generated some AI videos, um, based on that. Um, and I kind of sold it in the end just as a hey, sit back and relax show. You know, it's not interactive. Um, but, yeah, actually it was supposed to be, so it wasn't as nice as it could have been in the end. And, uh, yeah, I was obviously very disappointed. I mean, still it was a good lesson and in the end I learned a lot from it, but, uh, yeah, for next time I might have to use a lot of bright visuals like this one here, as you can see, you know, the tracking is working. But when the visuals get darker, uh, yeah, it's going to lose it again. So yeah, if you're using a position tracking system that relies on light, just be aware of that with your visuals as well, you know? So actually I'm going to do some more research on the Z2i camera, uh, which is hanging up there. Mm -hmm. Hello. And, um, yeah, be prepared for the next project. Um, and I also hope to deliver 
a proper tutorial um, about the camera, like how actually to use it and not how not to use it like I did. But I mean, that's, you know, I think it's just part of being a uh, part of learning. doesn't matter if it's touch designer or I don't know, some other software or in general life, you know, you just learn your lessons on a way and uh, just have to keep them in mind. All right. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like our YouTube content, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only comprehensive educational resource and community for immersive design, touch designer, and creative tech pros. In the HQ Pro trainings, we cover almost any topic you can think of, and we go way more in depth than we do in our YouTube tutorials. We have a private group where Matthew Reagan, myself, and our other industry veteran and pioneer teachers answer your questions every single day. If that sounds cool, click the link in the description to learn more. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more free touch designer and immersive content.